the title escape it escaped from the lab hp engineers um, in, in support of building products that the company is going to ship for revenue they also have to build various kinds of equipment and test fixtures and so forth that are used internally and are not intended to leave the company but as we've seen over the years, sometimes these do. So this, this uh, Escape from the Lab Part 1 is about one of these devices that escaped from an HP lab. And that is, that is the device. And you notice it looks a whole lot like an HP 67, except that the, it's sitting on top of a metal box, which it's actually bolted to. It has a circuit board hanging out on some wiring. And then it has a long uh, cable to a connector. And if we look... Closer at the, at the thing, uh, the box has a couple of uh, toggle switches on it. And uh, I may have a slide of this. Uh, also, the, that calculator, you notice it doesn't have a red window for the display. And it also doesn't have the normal slide switches. The buttons look pretty much normal. So what the heck is this thing? So we'll look closer at that board. And the board also looks like a, a, a PC board out of a 67, except in this case it's not, in, it's not actually inside the 67, and it only has one chip on it, where you can obviously see where other chips would go. So the mystery only intensifies. So obviously, we had to take it apart. So we unbolted, uh, John Doran was helping, was helping me with this, so we unbolted the, uh, or we took out the screws in the box just so we could get the, the, the box open and, and, and see what's in it. And there is this circuit board that, um, yeah, you see that there are a couple of uh, connectors that are these cables hanging out of it. There's another one, the big fat cable that goes to... Where did this come from again? Somebody just got it and bought it at a thrift store? Or just, just let me, let me... Okay. So, so... We've got these, these, uh, these connectors that are just loose wiring that one goes to that circuit board and the other goes to the metal box. We've got, we've got the bigger uh, fat connector that is this cable that goes off to this connector that obviously plugs into another piece of equipment. And we've got some ICs and a little bit of discrete circuitry here. Um, so in answer to Richard's question, where did this come from? Um, this is something actually that, that Jim Donnelly, who unfortunately could not be here today, um, gave me, and he does not exactly remember how, how it came about that he had the thing. He said he may have pulled it out of the trash, or it may have been given to him. It pre, it's, it's, the equipment predates his time at HP. It's not something he, wor he ever worked on. Um, so we'll continue. There's a the close-up of, of the, the dip plugs that, that go to the wiring. And, whoop, sorry. Um, here, so... So that, yeah, well, it's, it's just a, you know, this is just a prototype board. Um, and so there's some CMOS circuits here that have to do with, with timing. There's some analog components that also have to do with timing. A couple of, couple of big old, uh, not, not power transistors per se, but, but old, transis old, old transistors that are, yeah, that in metal can package. Um, I'm not sure that those are TO5, they might be TO39, I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't looked them up. Um, I, I, I described up here what some of those CMOS ICs are, it's just typical logic chips, nothing, nothing very special. And then there's some more chips down here at the bottom, and these ones are, are HP chips, um, so, so custom, not, not things that you could normally buy. And so we're going to get a, a closer look here, those are, those are P... Those are PMOS chips, and any of you that have taken apart an HP 25, one of the early ones, might actually recognize those. That is an eight register RAM chip that was used in, in a, a HP 25 or a few other machines. And since there are four of them of the same type of chip, that means there are 32 56-bit registers here for whatever this is. So we'll continue. Um, there is a... DC DC power supply board that was all, that was also in the box, and that that looks like it may it might be the same model out of another HP calculator. It might not. I'm not I'm not certain. Um, I'm going to go back a couple slides here. Actually, um, the display that I, that I mentioned, you might notice. You know, it's it's the typical molded bubble LED display, but 
unlike an HP 67 that, that has a, uh, a uh, essentially a 15 digit display, if you, count, if you count the bubbles here, there are only 11 of them. And given the, the leftmost one is presumably a sign digit that only displays a minus or, or blank, that means that's really only a 10 digit display. So that's kind of weird, this, you know, on a, something that looks like an HP 67 will only have a 10 digit display. But as, as we continue here, um, so we have the DC-DC converter. This is the back side of that entire prototype board. So you can see it's all hand wired. This is obviously not something they made a lot of, but um, so the, the 67 housing was bolted to that metal box. So we unbolted it. So there you see it uh, from the outside. You notice it does not, in fact, have batteries in it. It doesn't even have the battery contacts. And when we open it up, that up, um, we see that there's a single 40-pin dip IC in there and nothing else. And at this point, it's starting to confirm what my initial hypothesis was as to what this box was. Now, the reason I called attention to that display is my hypothesis had been that this had nothing to do with the 67, but was, in fact, a prototype for another kind of calculator. And this is kind of confirming this. And before I go on to the next photo, which will show that I see up closer, um, how, any, anybody want to hazard a guess, given that it was a, a, a 10 numeric digit display, what it might have been a prototype of? A metric ruler. Yeah, that, that must be it. Well, we'll, 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 we'll continue here. This is, this is the last slide of, of, of this particular presentation. Uh, and you'll look at this chip. It, was it, it, is a, it is a PMOS IC fabricated by, by AMI for, for uh, HP. AMI did a lot of the, AMI and MozTech were the two vendors that supplied uh, PMOS ICs to, to HP. And there's a date code and there's a word on here. Anybody read, can anybody read that? And so this, this is, and this was my guess based on the external display, this is a development handset for the Spice family of calculators, the HP 30E series. And something, something that was never really published, but that I had determined by my own investigations uh, 20 years ago, was that the Spice calculators used the same processor instruction set as the Woodstock family and the 67, which, which, was, which I referred to in the absence of any documentation out of HP as being a Woodstock architecture. And so this chip, now, in a, in a real SPICE calculator, the CPU chip, well, first of all, it would be plastic rather than ceramic, but this is, a, this is a prototype, but the CPU chip actually had the first 1K of ROM, and that meant that out of overall eight total SPICE models, if you include the C series, um, there weren't eight different processors, there were, there were three, and they, it was because they had three different first 1K of ROM, which meant multiple models shared the first 1K of ROM. And the intention was they put some of the most common math routines and things like that into that 1K of ROM that was in the processor and that, that could be shared between different models of calculators. And they may have early on even intended that you know, maybe they could have 1K that was common to all of them, but, it, but that didn't work out. So there are three different ones, but this doesn't have any, any legends that match any of those, but it says SPICE. And my expectation is that, that this, uh, that this chip is pro now the, the Spice processor had the display drive built into it, unlike everything that they had done previously. And so my, my belief is that this processor probably has everything in the real Spice calculator processor, except it probably does not have that 1K of ROM, or it may have the, one, it may have the 1K of ROM because it may have been close to the production chip design but with dummy code in the ROM or, or some way of disabling the code in the ROM or, or, you know, who knows what exactly. So, you know, honestly, Jim didn't know what this thing was and at first I didn't either and just had this hypothesis, but it seems to be borne out. And so just a few, a few comments here, mostly what I've already said, but um, it was just an interesting thing that, that came out of the lab and I have not researched it too much further. Um, the, the cable that, I, that, that hangs out of it um, and, and this will become relevant to part two of this presentation. The, um, the cable that comes out to this connector, what that did was that plugged onto something that served as a ROM emulator and probably had other debug support. And so the way, 
that calculators like this were, were developed was that some sort of host computer was used for the, for the firmware development and then it got downloaded into an emulator which would connect to a handset like this so that, so that the person developing the firmware could actually try it out. And of course at some, at some stage in development when they have a prototype that actually more or less does what it's supposed to, then this sort of hardware could also be used for, for early on testing by somebody other than the actual software or firmware development engineer. So, um, any, any questions or comments on this? Is that on the price table? <laughs> no, it's not. And it is relatively delicate, so I didn't, I didn't actually bring it. Yes? So, this is more a mule than a prototype, but did HPs at that time have in-circuit emulators in a generalized form? Uh, as far as I know, no. Um, and their, their processor architecture was so different than anything else in industry that it wasn't, there wasn't really any standard you know, commercial emulator product that could have been adapted to serve this purpose. So this was all... What would you expect this was? What's that? What year would you expect? This, this would have been done probably in 76 or thereabouts. So about the same time that the... It might have started in APD in Cupertino. Um, really? Yeah. Be because because the stuff was in you know the, the stuff is in development for a while right the the um, spice series calculators I think came out in seventy seven or seventy eight but obviously the development had to start years before so so this HP sixty seven that the body is being used um, was quite possibly even still in development at that time although it was further along in development so this might have been just before or just after the HP sixty seven was introduced. Isn't and it, amazing how easier it is today to do the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Any other questions in the back? Apologies if I'm skipping ahead, but what is the, the connector on that cable? Well, that's, that's a, a CHAMP connector, um, uh, also sometimes known as D-style, but it's not like a, it's not like a DB25. Um, it, is more, it is more like the, the incorrectly known uh, Centronix connector, which is not actually the name of a connector, but it's the type used on, on parallel printers. That's what I thought. So, so uh, th the parallel printer connector was 36 position. The uh, 24 position is used for HPIB or, or IEEE. This is, this is a, if I remember correctly, about a 14 position connector. And that's because the calculator bus is just a serial bus. Yes? Is that where power comes in and did you power it up? To it has not been powered up. I don't have any information on the pinouts. So short of doing any more reverse engineering, um, you know, I wouldn't even know where to apply power or what voltage to apply. So at some point, um, if I find myself at loose ends, I may investigate it further. But also powering it up, it wouldn't do anything because I, you know, I don't, I don't have anything aside from power to connect to that. Um, it would not serve any function at all to to power it without having, um, without actually having something that provided the ROM emulation capability wired up to that. Even even if that that spice chip that is in there has the one K of internal ROM. That 1K of ROM never contained enough code to do anything useful on its own. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even generate a display. In the back? Oh, is that a question? No. All right. Thank you.